with that. Uh, Congressman Jolly, what does it mean, this redistricting? It's going to be a, a much bigger challenge, or will it, for Republicans? Well, I, I think the odds are Democrats take the House, and the reason why goes to a lot of what Steve was saying. You have right now 23 seats that have to flip. There actually are 23 Republican-held seats in Congress in districts that Hillary Clinton won. So if you look at all the special elections that Trump got elected, Democrats have overperformed, right? We have seen them pick off one or two, but the reality is those have been in supermajority Republican seats. When these races come down to those 23 or 24 that are competitive that Hillary Clinton won, Democrats are going to put every single one of those points on the board. To Eric's point, though, and this is important, Democrats have to decide what their message is. The anti-Trump energy on the left will take care of itself. Democrats need to decide what... We've seen that yet, but we haven't needed to, right? The anti-Trump stuff is taking care of it. But Republicans will start spending money about 90 days out, and it will be spent on some hard messaging. They'll say, we voted for lower taxes, Democrats voted for higher taxes. Democrats are going to need to coalesce around the message. The opportunity is theirs. Congressman, I have to agree. I don't know that I've heard a clear Democratic message. And when we talk about the House flipping, the immediate next conversation is, will he get impeached? That doesn't seem to be what everyday Americans care about. That's not a winner. And we shouldn't miss the message that voters sent to us when they elected Donald Trump, which a lot of them felt opportunity was out of reach. And they thought he was the guy that could put it back in reach. He's not going to solve their problems. He's not interested. He doesn't have ideas. Then how are Democrats? For us, I think it's around this idea that you work hard and in America that should mean something, that your hard work should amount to your kids having good schools, that your hard work should amount to you not going bankrupt because you get sick, that your hard work should amount to you dreaming that your kid could be the first in the family to go off to college, or that you could have a job that you can count on, a career that you can count on. So investing again and building, something he likes to talk about. So I, I think one of the first things we should do is put on his desk the things that he's already said he would sign. So don't be immediately divisive. Say, Donald Trump, you said a trillion and a half infrastructure. Here's the bill. The Republicans won't give it to you. We will. You said you're going to solve immigration. You said you'll take the heat. Here it is, Mr. President. Take the heat. Background checks. Here it is. Prescription drugs. You want to lower the cost. Here's what we can do. I think we should start and see if he's serious rather than just making these imaginary decisions right now and having no Republicans who will bring it to him. Part of that American dream that so many people have is rooted in capitalism. It is a centrist idea, and you acknowledge that if you run the risk of going too far left into sort of socialist country, you're going to lose those hardworking Americans who do, dare I say it, want to be rich one day. We should always root for success and not, and not try and divide success but multiply it. And to me, though, that means if you're going to give a tax cut, it's not just the CEO and the C-suite uh, people on the first floor. Uh, who get it, that every person, every floor, uh, from the janitor, they see an increase in their pay too. That's what was missing in this last tax. To that point, that forgotten American, yeah. somehow Democrats lost and President Trump won. But he has not delivered. If you look at what he's done, he talks a great populist game. And it certainly works at his rallies because he has extraordinarily high emotional intelligence. He's on down to Mar-a-Lago and high-fives guys who split their time between New York City and Palm Beach. He's soaking those brothers up, and but not people around the country. When is that going to hit home for them? If Bill Clinton felt your pain, Donald Trump felt your anger. Mm -hmm. He knew you were mad at the system and he was going to unrig the system for you. But the reality is Donald Trump and congressional Republicans have abandoned those very people from the day they began the supermajority in government. They don't know it, though. No, because they're listening to the echo chamber of the C-suite, of the CEOs who say, Sheldon Adelson, thank you for giving me $600 million in tax cuts. I'll give you 30 for your next re-election. That's who they're listening to. To Eric's point, though, and this is fascinating, both parties, both parties are having a hard family conversation right now. Where is their ideology within the party? Whose party is it? And the opportunity for either party, but particularly Democrats right now, Look, I'm, I'm a Republican voter. Yes, I was a former member of Congress. Yes, I do TV work. But the fact is, I'm going to the ballot box in November wanting divided government because I don't trust the current government under Donald Trump and Republicans in Congress. However, to your point on capitalism, if Democrats become the Elizabeth Warren pardon, party and go too far left, they're going to scare me off. And so then what do I do in November? I'm going into November hoping for divided government. And yes, that means Democrats take the House unless they scare me away. And that's a hard conversation. I mean, they're, they're everything from where are you in your gut as Democrats to what do the pollsters say? How do you get voters out? Both parties have that challenge. Is that a hard reality for you and your team? I mean, as you plan your reelection tour, 
You want to get that Bernie Sanders voter, especially in California, but you don't want to do it at the risk of losing the middle. And going across the country, particularly in the Midwest, I've talked to so many Bernie Sanders voters who voted for Donald Trump, so many Barack Obama voters who voted for Donald Trump. And for them, a lot of it was just around fairness, someone who was willing to be authentic and speak real to them. And, and now, again, they're going to have to look themselves in the mirror and their families in the eyes uh, when it comes to the election and ask, are we doing better? And I'll, I'll tell you, most families, they're not seeing their paychecks grow. They're seeing that health care is eating up more and more of their costs. They're, not, they're one emergency away from just going completely into debt. And I, I think that's an issue we've always owned. And we have to bring back the blue-collar voters who have been with us. And I don't think, that, I don't think that's too far uh, out of reach for us. Donald Trump went to go see all those voters. He told them that he cared. Now someone has to deliver and actually do it. All right, just a few minutes ago, President Trump, in a tweet, of course,